side. 30, 20, 15. They will not catch him today. This week at Inside Bobcat Football, the Cats are back from Lubbock, and we have all the highlights from Texas Tech. Fires a pass, it's intercepted, down the sideline, out of bounds, goes a Bobcat, and a flag is in, late hit. Plus a special feature of the Bobcats, tattooed putter Zach Robinson, and an inside look on the newest addition coming into Bobcat Stadium, the Pavilion in the southeast corner. All that coming up, but first, here's Bill, the Bobcat head coach, it is Francione. This past Saturday, the Bobcats traveled to Lubbock, Texas to take on the 25th ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders in front of a Jones AT&T Stadium, all-time record 60,997 fans. The Red Raiders prevailed over the Bobcats 33-7. Now we're joined by Bobcat head coach Dennis Francione. And coach Fran, the game on Saturday night, what an environment. Television audience, full house, raucous crowd, both bands. Had to be a great experience for that football team. It was. It was a good setting to play football in. We had great weather, and uh, uh, our guys were excited about having the opportunity to be there. Defensively for the Bobcats in the first half, the Red Raiders end up with just two field goals. Texas Tech had to punt the ball twice. Justin Awuji, Xavier Daniels had a couple of key interceptions. What was the defensive plan going into the game Saturday night, and how did you feel about the defense's performance in the first half? Well, I thought the defense played well. Um, you know, the two interceptions were, were pivotal. Um, you know, the uh, the coverage was pretty good. Uh, we, we brought pressure at times, and, and we were effective with that. That was our plan going in. Um, you know, our defense through three games has continued to, to play pretty well. We gave up uh, a number of yards on, overall on the night, but still, um, uh, we played well in the red zone and gotten stops when we needed to, and so uh, if we can continue to play defense like that, we'll be okay. Speaking of defense, it looked like the defense did another really good job of stopping the other team from running the football. They did. Uh, Tech is not a, a great running football team, but uh, we were able to fit on that pretty well most of the night and, and uh, get pressure at times on the quarterback. He hurt us a little bit with uh, breaking containment a few times. Uh, and. Uh, Kind of, uh, we undercut a ball or two when he broke containment and it, and it hurt us. But really, uh, we fit to most of that pretty well. Now to the other side of the ball, the Texas Tech Red Raiders, that's the best Red Raider defense that I've seen in a, a number of years. Talk about the challenges that the offense was going up against in that first half in Lubbock. You know, we're going through our uh, growing pains on the offensive side of the ball, and that that was uh, a pretty good defensive team. It had good quickness and, and uh uh, things up front, uh, we we had a hard time uh, blocking them at times. But we were we were we had two opportunities inside the five yard line and didn't get any points. And uh, you can't beat a top twenty five team and do those kinds of things. We've got to get points on both those drives, and um, that was the frustrating part of it. Um, we showed some spurts, but but not much consistency. Coach, you go into the locker room at Jones AT and T Stadium, down thirteen to nothing. We're going to take a look at the first half highlights and. We'll be back a little bit later. The Bobcats are in Lubbock taking on the Red Raiders for the third straight season, looking for their first ever win against a Big 12 opponent. And the Bobcats established their physicality on defense early. After a big hit on Texas Tech's Jay Samaro, the Bobcats' defense didn't let up as freshman quarterback Baker Mayfield found out. Jamie Clavell head applies the hit and strips the ball for Mayfield, but the Red Raiders recover the fumble and settle for a field goal for an early 3-0 lead. After a punt from Texas State, Texas Tech has the ball back and the Bobcat defense kept flying to the football as Xavier Daniels stuffs DeAndre Washington for a loss of three. After forcing a three and out, Texas State has the ball back at offense, and that's when senior quarterback Tyler Art decides it's a good time to connect with Isaiah Battle. First for a 13-yard gain to attack territory, and later in the drive, Art looking for Battle again and finds him wide open in the flat. Battle does his part, turning a short catch into a big gain, 35 yards to the Red Raider one-yard line. But after a turnover, the score remains 3-0 Texas Tech. And that's when Texas State returns a favor as Daniels comes up with an interception of his own, picking off Mayfield for his first INT of the season. 
The Bobcats enter the game as the number one rush defense in the country, and DeAndre Washington again finds out the hard ways Blake McCulloch buries them after a short game. Later in the drive, and the Red Raiders inside the red zone decide to go for it on fourth down. Mayfield can't find anyone open and tries to run for the first down, but is stopped short by Kamu Talelai as the Cats force a turnover on downs. Different quarterback, same result. Davis Webb is sacked on fourth down by Cottom. One, two, three, four. Bobcats in on the stop. You think the pressure got to Webb after getting flushed out of the pocket? Webb throws an elevated pass right into the arms of Justin Awuji, who takes it back inside the 15 yard line as a nearby photographer is taken out of the process. Late in the second quarter, and Tech looking to convert on third and goal, try to attack the Bobcats on the ground again and again. DeAndre Washington is stood up and taken down by Jared Jeter Gilman. The Bobcat defense doesn't allow a touchdown in to the first half, but Texas State trails Texas Tech at halftime by the score of 13 to nothing. Coming up next, a profile on Bobcat punter Zach Robinson. Are you making it just any night? Or are you making it remember that night? Are you making it dinner after the game? Or are you making it a victory meal? Are you making it good enough? Or are you making it great with America's number one choice, Pizza Hut? Now Pizza Hut offers that great pizza at a great price, the $10 any carryout deal. Any pizza, any size, any toppings, now just $10 when you carry out. We all have a choice. Get America's number one pizza and make it great. How do you show your Bobcat pride? Now you can show it off and keep your money here at Texas State. Because whenever you buy at the University Bookstore at Texas State, that money stays here on campus. Apparel, books, gifts, and much more. Online or in the heart of Bobcat country, find it, get it, and keep it on campus. University Bookstore at Texas State, your bookstore. Lanky, he's talented, and he's tatted up. He's Bobcat punter Zach Robinson. Well, it takes uh, a, cl a clean drop, straight steps, and pretty much correct leg swing, uh, arm angle, the drop time when you drop the ball to when you kick the ball, the, uh, the back swing to the, the front swing your punt. There's a lot of things that go into it. I know, I've known Ryan Williams. Since high school, he played for South Lake Carroll, and I went to Farmer High School, and so we played against each other. Um, and Ryan Williams, he's the best deep snapper I've ever seen in my life. All right, this is uh, my partner in crime, Ryan Williams. We make up the Sharks unit. I'm the great white shark. He's the bull shark. <laughs> We're two of a kind. It's a constant process. Um, there's no, at no time you're going to be perfect and continue to be perfect. You're always going to have to tweak things and work things and continue to work on it, pretty much every aspect of hunting. Uh, there's not been one time in my career that I've had a drop be perfect consistently for weeks or even days at a time. It's always a process. As a punter, I strive to not ever have to make a tackle, and I do that by hitting good balls, good hang time, good distance, letting my coverage team get in a position to make a play. But if I, if I have to do it, I've worked on form tackling with Coach Brad before, so if, if it comes down to it, I know I have the ability to make a tackle. I started getting tattoos. Uh, when I was in high school, I was 17. Um, when I was a little kid, I always knew that I wanted tattoos. They've always appealed to me. I've always liked them. And so it's just kind of a no-brainer. It's just a matter of time until I was going to start getting them. This is 
probably my favorite piece just because it's really the only one that has sentimental value. Um, it's a Japanese traditional design which is obviously traditional Japanese style. Uh, they are two dwarf hamsters as samurai and it the meaning is I have I, I had two dwarf hamsters, one of them passed away, and they uh, would fight each other. I had to separate them. So that's really my favorite one. Most of my styles are Japanese traditional, um, minus the American traditional on my legs. Uh, those are my two styles that I you know, choose to get. I probably spent upwards of 48 hours in, in the tattoo chair. Every painful minute. I think it's worth it. So yeah, It's football season. I don't really know if Getting a tattoo right now is the best idea. As much as I would love to, I figure once football season's over, I'll start hitting the chair up again and moving forward with my, with my canvas. Coming up next, second half highlights. Texas State is a place that encourages dreams and offers connections that make those dreams come true. A place that engages minds and hearts. A place that puts my passion to work in ways to strengthen my community. What I learned at Texas State helps me reach beyond the campus and make a difference in the real world. just a game. Then it became your passion. You've sacrificed everything to arrive at this moment. Where my dogs at? Where my dogs at? Yeah! yeah! This is where it all comes together. He's going! 20, 10, 5, touchdown! And this is where it happens. The second half opens with the Cats trailing the Red Raiders 13-0. The Bobcats have the ball on offense first and try to establish their run game early in the third quarter as Robert Lowe blasts right up the middle for a gain of 11 yards. And Lowe didn't wait long to punish the Red Raiders some more. After taking the handoff from Arn, Lowe explodes right through the Tech defense. And you can see where this is headed, right to the end zone as Lowe finishes off a dazzling 49-yard run to put the Bobcats on the board, cutting Tech's lead to 13-7. Later in the third quarter, the Bobcats now trailing 20 to 7. Low has his number called again and picks up 13 more yards. The Red Raiders had a tough time getting their running game going, even having some issues on a simple handoff here as Davis Webb recovers the ball just in time to throw it away. Fourth quarter now, the Bobcats trailing 23 to 7. Webb looking to set up Jakeem Grant on a screen, but after making the catch, David Mayo was right there for one of his team high nine tackles. The Bobcats nation leading rush defense held the Red Raiders to just three points six yards per carry on Saturday and had seven tackles for loss as a team. Offensively, the day belonged to Robert Lowe, who had 130 yards of total offense against the Red Raiders, a career high for the sophomore from Waxahachie, who proved to be the toughest Bobcat to bring down for Texas Tech. The defense did its part to keep the Bobcats in the game, stopping the run, coming up with key red zone stops, and of course, forcing turnovers. Three interceptions for Texas State of Texas Tech's quarterbacks, the final one courtesy of first-year Bobcat, Jermon Williams. Although the defense had a nice game and the offense had its moments against the Red Raiders, it wasn't enough to pull off an upset in Lubbock. After a hard-fought 60 minutes, the Bobcats came up short at Jones AT&T Stadium. The final score, Texas Tech 33, Texas State 7. Coach Fran, we're in the team room here in the end zone complex at Bobcat Stadium. Uh, the second half at Jones AT&T Stadium, first drive of the third quarter, 
Robert Lowe breaks off a 49-yard touchdown run. Robert now has a touchdown in each of the first three games. He ended up with 103 yards rushing on Saturday night. Talk about his performance, and in particular, talk about that big play. Uh, Rob's played well. He, he is starting to become our most consistent down-in, down-out running back, and he's made some nice runs. And the touchdown run was, a, was really a fantastic run. He broke a tackle about 8 or 10 yards past the line of scrimmage and then took it to the house. Got a big block downfield from Ben Ija. Uh, but the offensive line and tight ends did a really good job on that play. Uh, there was no read to it. It was a give play. Rob had it all the way, and uh, we, we did a good job of executing that play. We fit on our blocks. Uh, created the seam for uh, uh, Rob to, to hit it, and, and he did the rest. You had an onside kick in, in the very next play after the touchdown. Onside kick that was 12 inches away from being perfect. Um, attempted a, a fake pun in the second half. There were some fourth down tries. You were working hard trying to be very creative in giving your football team every opportunity to win the game. We were. Uh, we, we didn't want to leave any bullets in the chamber when we left town. And uh, we, we, uh, we gambled a few times. It, it hurt us a, a little bit at times, but we were trying to find a way to put ourselves in a position to win the football game. And uh, the onside kick was about the length of a football from being perfect. Um, it it was, uh, could have been a really nice play to change momentum a little bit at that point in time. Uh, but there's a risk that you get field position. But, you know, the great thing about our defense playing like it is, um, uh, you have some confidence that you can still get a stop if, if, if you don't get the recovery. Uh, the final score, in my humble opinion, uh, doesn't come close at all to illustrating how well the Bobcats played on Saturday night. Um, it really had to be a tough post-game locker room because I know that you and your football team, every time that you take the field, your expectation is to win the game. Well, you know, it, it, you can play what-ifs. Um, you know, all you want to, and fans uh, do, do it a lot, and as coaches, we do it too. Uh, you know, and you, you look at that game, and you say, well, what if we'd have gotten the two touchdowns when we were inside the five like we should have? Uh, what if we hadn't have fumbled the ball inside the ten to give them a touchdown? There's 21 points right there. That's a big swing in this game. Uh, you know, it, it would probably be wrong for us to sit here and say we, we would have won the game, but we certainly could have been in a very good position to upset a top 25 team on the road. And uh, you can't have those kinds of breakdowns playing the top 25 at their house and, and, and win the game. And that's unfortunately what happened to us. But I was proud of the way our guys fought. Uh, they prepared well. Um, they fought all the way to the end. They played really hard. Uh, they were frustrated at, when the game was over, too, because they knew they'd kind of let something slip through their fingers a little bit. But, um, you know, that's football, and we've got to make the plays when, when they're presented to us. All right, Coach, we're going to step aside. We're going to come back a little bit later. We'll close the book on Texas Tech and get ready for the Wyoming Cowboys, who will be here at Bobcat Stadium this upcoming Saturday. Oh,
Tim Gay breaks a tackle down the sideline across midfield. Inside the 30, 20, 15. They will not catch him today. Touchdown. Catch Inside Bobcat Football with Dennis Francione. Tuesday on the Time Water Cable Sports Channel. And in Houston, Thursdays on the Comcast Sports Network. Give low, up the middle, break to tackle, 35. Bats outside, 20, 15, 10. Cuts back inside of the five. Dives, end zone, touchdown, Texas State. Coach, before we, we leave the Texas Tech game, again, j just from a fan's perspective, from up in the press box, you've played Texas Tech three games in a row, and one of, my, one of my big takeaways from the game on Saturday is, in contrast to the first two meetings, it looked like your team, from a physicality standpoint, from a mental toughness standpoint, it looked like the Bobcats and Red Raiders, it was toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Well, we're getting closer uh, to, to being that level of program. It's taken us time uh, to, to work ourselves uh, up to this level. Uh, and we've still got work to do, but um, I, I did feel like that this was the, really the best chance we had to beat Texas Tech uh, as you go through the game. And uh, I was proud of the way our players responded. And, and I think they felt like they had a, a good opportunity to win the game. It just didn't work out. Wyoming Cowboys now will be coming into Bobcat Stadium this Saturday for a 6 p.m. kickoff and a record of 3-1 and one on the year. Brett Smith, their quarterback, a guy who we know a lot about, already has 13 touchdowns passing this season. Offensively, the Cowboys are scoring about 40 points a game. Looks like the defense, they're going to have their hands full again. Uh, they are. The, the Cowboys have put up 600 yards twice this year, once against Nebraska and then this last week against Air Force. So they're very capable of moving the ball. Uh, another high-powered offense. Really good quarterback. Brett Smith is playing really well. We played against him uh, in 2011 when we went up there the first time, and they handled us very handily up there. And, and he played. He was a true freshman that did not play like a true freshman that day. I thought he played very well. And, uh, and now he's a, a junior, I guess. So, uh, you know, he's got a lot of experience, a lot of games under his belt. So this, this will be a good challenge for our football team. Now to the other side of the ball, you look at the Cowboys' defense. They're holding up their end giving up a shade under 20 points per game, holding opponents to 36% on third down conversions, talent on that side of the ball as well. They're a good, sound, solid defense. You know, Wyoming, uh, I've coached against them for a long time, and uh, they uh, are pretty much the epitome of Wyoming defense. They're tough, uh, they're physical, they're sound, they're well coached. Uh, they make the plays that they need to make. They don't make many mistakes and they make you execute and beat them, and that's what we'll have to do if we're going to have a chance in this game. All right, Coach. Well, as always, thanks for joining us, and we will see you this upcoming Saturday, 6 p.m., when the Wyoming Cowboys pay a visit. All right. More Inside Bobcat football after the break. you show your Bobcat pride. Now you can show it off and keep your money here at Texas State because whenever you buy at the University Bookstore at Texas State, that money stays here on campus. Apparel, books, gifts, and much more. Online or in the heart of Bobcat country, find it, get it, and keep it on campus. University Bookstore at Texas State, your bookstore. Play fake, looks right, Webb of the pocket. He wanted to go deep, now goes short, pass is intercepted. 35 yard line, Awuji, 20, 15, out of bounds at the Red Raider 14 yard line.
Coming to Bobcat Stadium this season is a new addition to the southeast corner, the Pavilion. It'll be a great place for entertaining with over 3,200 square feet uh, for the Bobcat Club and for our athletic alumni. Uh, and it is something that we needed. We'd outgrown uh, our previous space that our athletic alumni were using for our halftime events. And this is going to be a really nice location for them. A lot of different amenities is going to make the game day a really enjoyable experience for them. Uh, this would be a great place, not only for our football game days, but for outside events. Uh, you know, I can see everything from uh, from donor functions that we'll have in the room to uh, our coaches using it for recruiting uh, visits. Um, it's going to be a showpiece, uh, another showpiece out here at our football stadium, and another great spot for uh, for our department to use for for any kind of outside events that, that we need to host. Brand Freeman, my broadcast partner on the. Texas State Bobcat Radio Network now sitting in with us. And, Brand, you heard Coach Fran say it earlier in the show, the game on Saturday night, a lot of what-ifs, but the, the point is that the Bobcats went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number 25 team in the nation. They did. I mean, the game was 13-0 at halftime. The Bobcats got an early touchdown in the third quarter to make it 13-7. You know, defensively, the first two games of the season, the Bobcats faced those up-tempo, no-huddle offenses in Southern Miss and Prairie View A&M. So you thought they'd be well prepared for Texas Tech in that regard. Uh, Red Raiders run a, ran a similar style of offense, but certainly the personnel was a lot better. And just think about just how much the defense was on the field. 96 plays for Texas Tech. And if you add in their time of possession, they averaged nearly four plays per minute. The defense was certainly challenged against the Red Raiders this past Saturday in Lubbock. But defensively, even though the numbers over 500 yards of offense for the Red Raiders, Bobcats played well. Yeah, you, you look at the, the stats, and I know you and I like to incorporate stats into our radio broadcast, and we like to look at numbers. The Bobcats are still tied for first in the nation in fourth down conversions. Opponents are 0 of 8 in that department. Turnover margin, tied for third in all of FBS. The Bobcats are plus 2 per game. It was 3-3 three to three against the Red Raiders. Rush defense, the Bobcats are fourth in the nation, giving up just 62 yards a game. Fumbles recovered, tied for six with five fumble recoveries, and on and on and on. Defensive coordinator Craig Nivar and the defensive group have, have done a great job. And as Coach Fran said, it's going to be all hands on deck when Wyoming comes into town on Saturday. It will be because, I mean, you look at the Cowboys, they come in with a record of 3-1 and off of an annihilation of the, of the Air Force this past Saturday, 56-23. And you look at the first three games of the season, you look at the quarterbacks for all those respective teams, Brett Smith will be the best one the Bobcats have played so far. He's averaging nearly 400 yards of total offense per game, about 74 yards rushing, about 313 yards passing. Uh, and this past Saturday against the Air Force Academy, 35 of 41 for 373 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. We saw him as a freshman. He's so much better now as a junior. He's going to be a handful on Saturday. You know, the fans were a big part of the Bobcats' victory against Prairie View A&M. And really, you go back in the history books, any win, big win the Bobcats have had here in San Marcos, the crowd has been pivotal. Folks need to show up this Saturday. They do. I mean, it, it, this could be one of those swing games. I mean, it would be a quality win over a good Mountain West Conference team. Uh, when you talk about bowl eligibility, you know, th getting this one would be your third win against, against a team at the time being being three and one would go a big way towards earning that uh, shot at a bowl come come December. So looking forward to it, Bill, and looking forward to seeing you at Bobcat Stadium. And that'll wrap up uh, this week's show of Inside Bobcat Football. Thanks to everybody for the help this week. And I'm, I'm Brant Freeman reminding you to unleash your battle cry. We'll see you next time. Tim Gay breaks a tackle down the sideline across midfield. Inside the 30, 20, 15. They will not catch him today. Touchdown. Catch Inside Bobcat Football with Dennis Francione. Tuesday on the Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. And in Houston, Thursdays on the Comcast Sports Network.